All right, good morning. Thank you for coming to uh, Deep Dive on JSON and Python. Glad you're here this morning. Uh, so to get started, we're going to um, we're going to cover the requirements of if you would like to follow this lab, the things you'll need to um, be able to follow along if you're following along with the, the coding of this. Um, we're going to cover the concepts of JSON and Python, um, requesting content and parsing the content as well, and as uh, well as additional resources. So some of the requirements for being able to follow along with the, uh, with the coding for this is you'll you definitely need a web browser, um, basic web browser. Chrome is um, what I prefer. Um, Python 3.5 or greater. Um, you'll also need a, an editor, um, any editor. I typically use Atom or Visual Studio Code or things like that. Um, you also get GitHub, or sorry, GitHub. Uh, Git is optional. Um, and then also Postman is optional too, but we'll be using examples with Postman here. And so um, Postman is a good tool for doing a, any kind of pre-request on your JSON. What you can do is you can do API requests using um, Postman and get responses back to see how the data will look and how you'll be able to use that data later. And then um, here's where, so using Git, um, you can either download it directly or using GitHub, you can do a Git clone to pull the library we'll be working with as well. That's going to be in Python. And you can use this URL link here off of GitHub. And this will be the, for the Git clone as well. And so the coding 202 parsing JSON fo folder that is in there is where we'll be working with today. And here's some optional JSON tools that um, help with working with the uh, JSON data structures as well. So JSON. JSON is JavaScript object, um, object notation. And really what it is is um, it's information stored in key value pairs. You'll get this back as a string response from the API request that you're making. And um, as you can see here, the object that we're looking at, so every object which is um, signified by the curly braces, um, you have a key, which would be the first name, or a, a key or a name, name, name value, key value. Um, you have a first name, and then you have Jock, and then you have last name, and you have Reed. And so that's, that's me right here. And so the, um, your key value pairs are your names um, for the definition of that. And then if you have more than, um, more than one of those, you can store those in an array. And an array object will be a list of items that you'll, you'll get back. So you'll have more than more than one set of key value pairs. And so here's a little bit more complicated example of that. So you have your information that comes back um, from your JSON response and curly braces, and then you have um, net nested values as well. So you can, so when you get some JSON responses you get back are nested objects. So you have some objects that are de um, designated by key value pairs, but then when you get to um, batters, you have additional key value pairs that list that information as well. And so you can store that. And, and every JSON response is going to be different. It's going to depend on the API that you use, um, depending on whether it's uh, um, who's providing the information from the API. So Python. So one of the, one of the good, great things about Python, Python is very good about um, Parsing, parsing string data, parsing um, through dictionary, especially things like JSON. It's, a, it's very valuable for that. You can write a small amount of code and get a lot of information out of it from using it. Um, but one of the most important things about Python is that you need to have, um, you're, you're using indentation or white space to be able to um, define the structure. So you're not using semicolons to end sentences and, um, and lines in your um, and lines in your code, like would you like where you would use that in Java or JavaScript or things like that, um, and so indentation is very important. That can be a little annoying sometimes when you're first learning it or you're coming from other programming languages, but if you grasp the concept and you keep going with it, it actually gives you better looking code because sometimes when you're writing other languages, you can mash a bunch of code together. It doesn't look very good. It's not very readable for the next person. Python kind of solves that problem by forcing the, the white space, and then you have the, the ability to write code that if I wrote a piece of code, you'll be able to interpret it if you know Python and kind of know where we're going with it. 
Um, and just like any other um, object-oriented uh, programming language, you have the, um, all the same kinds of things in the program. So you'll find types of data, variables, assignments, arrays, um, statements like import, so they use import to pull in libraries, print to, print to console, so it'd be the same thing as like, if you're using command line, it'd be like echo to console or um, system out print, that kind of thing. Um, and then you have conditionals like if, if else, and then uh, loops. So you'll have while loops and for loops and things like that, just like any other programming language. And so here's, uh, here's further an example of Python types. So, and, and this is the same, just if you're familiar with other programming languages, this is very similar, but um, you have all the numeric ones. So you have ints, ints are your, your single and double digit numbers, and then floats be your decimals and complex. And then you have Boolean, so you have true, false, um, you also have strings, and um, strings are usually typically defined by either single quotes or the, the double quotations, and you can go as far as like using three quotations on each end to define strings as well. Um, and then we also have sequences like lists. Lists are just, uh, and basically in most languages, lists would be, so lists for Python is just an array. You just um, define, if you have a bunch of numbers defined in there, there you can iterate through those values. Um, starting with the very first one, which would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, so just like any array in any other programming language. Um, and then you have tuples. Tuples is um, similar to list, but you can store different values in it as well. So you could say uh, um, your first value at um, your first key value of the list would be, maybe it's a, a digit, so it's like 55. But then you can store the next value could be a string. So it could be um, this class is awesome or something like that. But, um, and then you could store a, a Boolean, which would be like false or something like that in there. Um, and then um, we have mappings, which are dictionaries. And so this is important for, uh, dictionaries is important for what we're using here, because um, what Python does is when you convert um, the JSON string from, that you're getting, you're basically converting it to a dictionary. And dictionaries are what's known in programming as uh, hash maps or hash tables, and that allows you to iterate through the data very quickly, because the list is an order, is, an, is a very ordered thing, whereas um, a dictionary is an unordered thing, but it's mapped over by the values. So like the example going back to this right here, when you call um, an object, so you're calling the array, and then you go, the first one would be zero, so if you're calling me, and then you would say first name and the value, and then that would be, and that would give you, that would return jock. And that's already mapped over, and you're able to get to that information quickly. Whereas if it was just listed one after another, you'd have to iterate several times and do some conditional flows just to be able to find the information, and that would be problematic for a lot of reasons. So um, dictionaries helps solve a little bit of that problem. And it's also, just like with JSON, has the curly braces for using the, um, in the information. And here's more examples of numeric types and how they're defined with variables. So x equals 10, so that would be your int. And then type x is int equals, that would be true. Um, and you get your booleans, true, false. Uh, just be careful in Python when you're using true, false. A lot of other languages, it's lowercase for the first letter, and Python, it's capital. You can make that stake, mistake quite often when you're doing it. I still make that mistake, and I've been using it for a long time, so just be careful of that. Um, and then you have your strings, which you just you know define, like so x equals Mike. And those are using the single quotes, but you can use the double quotes as well. Um, and then you have lists. So here's kind of the example. So a list is just like 10, 20, 30. And then there's the example of the tuple. So like there you have the 10, and then you have, um, so you have the int, and then the string, and then you have a float. Um, and then the dictionary is an, another key value pair, like we were given examples for before. <coughs> so here's an example of, um, some of the import statements that you can use, and some we'll be using here. So like you have import JSON, um, import URLib2. Um, and then um, there's your sh how you do variable assignments, similar to what we're seeing with the numeric types as well. So um, you have that. And then um, you also have the conditional. So yeah, if then, if life is greater than death, then yes, I'm still alive. That's <laughs> um, basically, you give it um, a value, and it'll, and it'll do something. So the, do what it does after the if, if, if the statement is true, then it'll um, so in this case, it's printing out to console what the, the, the string is still alive. And then you have the J, so method invocation. So you can use method invocation to store into variables as well. So in this case, um, if you look at the JSON content, when it says JSON equals JSON loads.content, you're using a 
a function to um, load the content in there, and then you can, uh, whatever the value comes out on that, it'll load it into the variable, variable for a JSON content. And then you have the for loops. So the for loops allows you to iterate through um, lots of material. And then you have method ch um, chaining as well. So you can define separate variables like you do here. So you have the open URL um, with the URL lib to you open, and you put the request in there. And then you come back, and then you read it. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You can do it all in one line and then it, define it in just one variable. Depending on your use case, that may be useful. You might need to break it up in several variables if you need to use certain parts of that information later. But you can also just define the full function of the value in there. Um, then you have array indexes. And so um, in this one, you got like first element, second element, third element. If you call 0, you would have, um, so when, out, of an, out of an array, you would get first element. But element equals an array 1 would actually be the string um, second element. And that's where that value would be stored there. And then you got multidimensional arrays. Where, um, which would be basically li lists nested within lists. So you're basically, you have a list. Just like we were looking at the JSON, you have objects nested in there. It would be, a list would be the same thing. So you'd have multiple lists nested within the list as well. And then you can use compound statements using for loops or using for loops within if statements or if statements within for loops, things like that. And then combination of therein. So when you're, uh, when you're requesting content from an API, you um, basically, you're going to give information to um, the API. So that way, it can give information back. And that can be, um, depend, depending on what you're going to get back, is going to be dependent on what you, what you give to it, what the, what the, what the response is. And that's going to be controlled by various things. So URL parameters are one of the things that, are, um, that can control. So like this URL here, um, this hashtag get maps, if you go to this um, link right here, it'll take you to a certain section of that website. So the response back is it takes you to a certain part as opposed to doing that. So you control some of the response by giving it um, URL um, query, uh, query parameters as well. Um, and then you have form-based transactions, and you might be using those for, um, depending on the API or the HTTP request you're using, you'll, you'll give it information based on a certain form that you're filling out for that. Um, and then also depending on your headers as well. So HTTP, header, HTTP headers are um, an important part of your, um, your API request or your HTTP request to be able to get the right information that you're looking for. So like if you request a site that is secure, you'll use HTTPS. And that's, and that's built into the headers. You see that when you're using the browser. But it's also if you're using a request, you have to make sure that's correct as well. Um, and then also your message body. If you're, if you're posting information to either update and then get information back, um, er, the things you include in the, in the message body will be important as well. And so the response can be, it can come back as a, as a lot of different things. It can come back as XML, JSON, Atom, um, SOAP request, which is a, an XML-based request as well. So you get different con um, depending on your, your API, you'll get different content back. Um, so here, we're going to do a little um, request um, via Postman to kind of get an idea of uh, some JSON responses we can get back. And I'll show you all that here. And so I'm going to use this, this particular link right here to do our request. And I'm going to use that in Postman to kind of give you an idea. And Postman's a really good tool. I actually use it quite often to um, help when I'm getting started with an API. I do initial API requests to kind of see what the content will look like. And this helps you get an idea of where to start when you're, before you're going to parse data to. Because um, it's one thing I like reading about it, because I, I read a lot of tech, technical documents, but I'm more of hands-on, so I want to see what I'm getting back before I'm able to do it. So Postman allows me to do that. So I'm just going to send this request as a basic get. So I just put in the, um, the URL here that, we, that I have here. And then there we go. And then I get the, the JSON response back. And uh, and, you can, and you can see the structure. It starts off, um, um, it's uh, broken up by, um, by an array of items. So it starts with an array. Um, and it comes through like, and, and then you have your objects defined in there. And in each object, you have your key value pairs. And that gives you your information. So, um, you have, so if you want to put in values to find someone's name or um, where they live, their address, things like that, you can get it. And you also have nested values as well. So when you come down to address, you then have 
a nested set of key value pairs that define the address itself. So if you just asked for the address value, you would get, the, and you were parsing that data out, you would get just everything that was an address. But if you wanted to get more specific, you can parse the data even further beyond that, which we'll, we're going to show examples for as well. <coughs> So this is a condensed version of the response we got back. So just to understand, so um, looking at the response, you see that um, one of them was, so the very first response is ID one, um, defin uh, defining that's the, the, the first ID in the, in the list that we're defining. And then name, name is the Leanne Graham. And so, and those are just key value pairs. And then you can go down and define even further, so for the next values, and it's just a, a list of arrays, and you can see that denoted by here. So here's the, the list right here, and each object is, each, is an object in the list, and it's separated by the comma right there. And so here's a, a little bit clearer example of what I was talking about. So you can see the array or the list in Python, and then each object coming down. OK, so now what we're going to do is um, if uh, we're going we're gonna, to, I'm going to show you some of the code to be able to um, start requesting the content with Python. And so this is going to be a basic request at first. We're going to request the content before we do anything about, uh, with parsing content. So I just want to see, I just want to show you what it looks like when you request the content um, using Python as well. And so I'm using the same library. Um, you can use Git, like here. Like I was mentioning in the other slide, you can use git clone. The git, if you're familiar with git, you would just type in git clone, and that would download it to your directory. If not, you can download it here, and this will um, pull the zip file down, and then you can unzip that file and use it. Um, and then we're going to launch a terminal here, and we're going to locate the, the coding 202 parsing JSON, and then we're going to use this. We're going to run this file here. Also, when running this file, um, depending on if, you're, if you have more than one version installed on your Windows machine, it, it may be called Python 3, but definitely if you're on Mac OS, it's going to be Python 3, but it, um, the command will probably just be, if you're using Windows it, and you only have Python 3.5 or greater installed, it's going to be Python get cmx json.py. And we'll run that here in the terminal. But for, before we do that, we're, let's look at the, the code real quick. Okay. Can y'all see that okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, so for part of the, so some of the statements I was talking about earlier where you're um, using import. So you, pull, you can pull in, we're pulling in libraries to help us do these requests. These are defined libraries in Python that allow us to be able to do the request. And so these are, these are all built-in libraries. Um, and we're using that um, to, so you don't have it to download any additional Python libraries. But um, a good library I recommend that's a third-party library, and it's used primarily for doing um, HTTP requests, is called Requests. And if you just Google Requests, you'll find it pretty easily. It's a, just say Request Python, and it comes up. And it's a, it makes it a lot easier even than using this, um, reduces the amount of code you have. But as you can see, we do the, um, we're going to import from the URL lib library, we're going to report, import request and URL open, and then we're going to import the JSON library, and the JSON library um, is important for getting the data and the way we want to see it. Um, so I'm going to run it, and then I'll come back through this. Okay, so I'm gonna put the command here, and then, so I'm already in the folder here, so there we go. And so when I make the request with Python, you'll, you'll notice it's similar as the request I did earlier with Postman. I get a request back that, um, with the JSON parsed out for me. So kind of going back through this right here, so you have the, what we want to do first is we want to find the URL that we're trying to get to. In this case, we're using this uh, um, 
CMX um, S, uh, MSE API um, from devnetapi.cisco.com. And we, we give it some information, so we, we have to first define the URL. Um, we then define some headers. We have some basic authentication for that. And then we um, find other he headers for, for it to accept um, um, application JSON, so that way we know we're getting JSON responses back from the API as well, and that's one of the ways you can control APIs. Yes? Say that? Um, no, not exactly. That's what do you use for authorization with this uh, uh, DevNet API box? Um, well, this API, um, I think for authorization, uh, the, uh, I don't remember exactly how we, uh, the, the authorization for this particular API. This is basically just an example for, for this. But it, you, um, typically what you would do with most APIs is you're going um, to have another portion of the API. Um, that, that gets a little bit more complicated because you start getting an authorization. You're going to give it some values like your username and your password. And then you're going to get an authorization token back, depending on what you're using, unless you're using OAuth or OAuth2 or something like that. And so it's going to give you a token back. And so this is the token right here. So if you're using the Spark API, uh, which uh, they had a presentation up that right before this, um, you would go through, there's, a, there's an authorization part. And so you go through that authorization, you get a token back. Once you get that token, you can then use that to um, do future requests. Yeah, and it all depends. Every API is a little bit different. Some, ha some have basic authentication. And so it's just uh, base 64 encoded. And that's a good question. But yeah, um, it just, a lot of it just depends on the API. Um, so everyone's a little bit different, but in, in this case, yeah, you would you would you'd put in some um, some basic information for your username and password. Once you get that back, you can use that token. And some tokens, um, you'll have a life of how long you can use it. So they'll some will be a few days, or maybe it'll even just be a very short amount of time. It depends on the API. Everyone's a little bit different. Um, I think. If you're doing authorization, like OAuth tokens for Spark, if you're doing an integration, lasts like, I think the first one lasts like 60 days, or it used to. I don't that part I don't remember. But then request to, like refresh tokens, because you have to if you want to re refresh that token. I think refresh tokens last seven days. So if you have to continually use it, you have to continually refresh that token, and you would have an API process in your program to do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so yeah, you you define that authorization in there. So this is a header in the. Um, um, and the response, or the request that you're making, and then you do the application JSON, like I said, to get the JSON back. And here you're going to define um, that response. Um, this, from this information you've, you've, you've stored in this variable right here, and then the request.add header updates this variable. And then you use that in when you're using the URL open for the response. And then when you wanted to store, store the response string, which is going to be the body of the, or the, the message body of your response back from the API, um, you're going to read it here. Um, but just a note about the decode. So a lot of, um, so Python uses Unicode 8 for um, how it reads strings and so how you're going to print something out. So if you need, so, um, and that's not, the reason why you want to put the decode here, because depending on the API you're calling, you may not be getting Unicode back. So you want to make sure that you're putting that in there to um, do that. Python, if you're using Python 2, you wouldn't experience that as much. Um, but, but using Unicode uh, as a design choice by when they wrote Python 3, so I'm not, uh, I don't remember exactly why they did that. But um, that being said, is once, you do the, once you have the response string, it's, going to take, it's basically going to take this response right here. It's going to, um, it's going to pull out the, the message body and then what we're going to do in the JSON object is we're going to use the JSON.loads. And basically what that does is it converts it to the dictionary form that we're looking at. And so that response we got back was a dictionary. And then when we, um, we want to print it out, we want to print it back out as a string. So JSON.dumps moves it back into that same string format. Um, but the JSON library has a few extra um, things to help us out. That You can sort the keys. So it'll start with the initial key, and it'll sort those in order alphabetically or numerically. And then you can indent by four. And so that, that, what that does is so each section, so when you start getting nested values, you're going to see an indent by four the next level over. Yeah, so and we'll go back and see that. So we're like right here. So you see that, and then you have the indent. And so every section under that. 
And so it, it, that makes it useful if you know you're going to print out the data and you're going to look at it because it's human readable. Because what you get back is a string. So if you're printing out just the string of the, it's just going to look like a big mess when you get it back. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, it's literally like, yeah, it's, just, yeah, it's a very long string. It's a lot of data. Um, and so being able to view it in a way that's usable is, that's nice. So it's, it's good to use this feature right here. All right. And then this is, a, this, this is kind of a condensed breakout again of the response we're getting back. So then you can see um, you have your first object, and then you have um, maps, which is your first key value pair. And then you have an object within that. So you have a nested object, which is campus. And then you have an array of items in there as well. And so, um, and then you have further objects going down. And so, and those are all defined. So once once we get into actual parsing it with the uh, um, with Python, you'll see that we'll be able to um, take that data and um, move through it and get only the values that we're looking for, and we can print those out as well. So methods of parsing that's a that's a good thing for us to talk about. So. Um, you can, depending on the data you're getting back, JSON is meant to be human readable. If it's not a lot of data you're getting back, it's not like this super long string like you were talking about, um, it may not be necessary to parse it. It just depends. It depends on your use case. It depends on the API you're using. You could get it back, just like I was showing you with the, when it had my name and then um, my coworker's name, Matt Dinopoli. That's a very limited amount of information. If you, if you just need to see that information, you don't need to do anything else with that information, you're just getting the response back automatically, and you're using it maybe in a report. You don't necessarily have to parse it out. It helps, but um, it's not necessarily what you have to do. Um, but most of the time, you're going to want to parse the data because you're going to get those really long strings back. Um, you can do it yourself. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. You c when you get the string data back, you could do a lot of regex and things like that. I mean, even Python's got a regex library you could use, and you could go through and use all that to parse through that information. Um, that makes it a lot more complicated, in my opinion. It's gonna, and you're going to write a whole lot more code. The JSON libraries are meant to make it your life easy and to um, help you get through the data faster. So definitely try to use those. And, um, or you can, you, know, you can build or use a framework. And that's kind of what we're doing here is we're using JSON. There's other JSON library, third-party libraries that are really good as well that you could use um, for Python. And they'll help you get through some of that. And you can look up uh, some available libraries for using JSON at json.org as well. Um, so parsing is um, one of the things about parsing the data is you need to understand the data. And that's kind of where Postman came in as well. If I want to, if I want to, depending on the API I use, um, I'm going to read the docs, but I'm also going to see what I'm getting back as well. So I can kind of say, oh, then I'm, when I'm reading the API docs, I can say, they're gonna, this is what you expect to get back. I'm like, OK, so I go to Postman, I request it, I get it back. Once I know what I'm, kind of information I'm going to get back, I also know what I can do with that information. I know what those val how those values will be representative to me and how I can parse those data out and how I can use that to do other cool things. And we'll see some of that as we um, go through some of the examples here is we'll actually we'll start with getting information back and just doing simple parsing where we just print um, bits of the information out. But then we'll also get that information, and then we'll use it to create other things and do other activities. And so that becomes important when you're using this. Um, oh, yeah, and then kind of what I was saying before is uh, um, so here's some different libraries. So URL lib, URL lib2. Um, those are built into Python, so those are standard libraries. And requests, that's the one I, I highly recommend. Um, I mean, if you look it up, if you go to a lot of Python forums, and it, even if you look up, if you Google, how do I do an HTTP request, you used to be able to find a lot of responses like in Stack Overflow a long time ago um, with, that would tell you how to do it in URL lib. But the most common response I've seen when someone even requests, how do you do it in URL lib, is go use requests. <laughs> It's just it's a it's a really good library. It may, it's going to make your life a lot easier. Um, here, just for example, we want to kind of I like to show people the basics of how it's done, um, and kind of the way we're using it is simple. But if you get into more complicated ways of using request, um, you probably don't want to use URL lib. You probably do want to use request. And then there, there's JSON. So the JSON I I don't use any third-party JSON libraries. I like the the built-in ones, so I highly recommend that. 
Um, but I also recommend trying the other ones. You might try them and like them better. I've tried them. They're okay. Um, but they're, they're, it's worth a shot. You might like it, um, some of the functionality better than just regular JSON. All right, so for this next activity, we're going to use one of the other examples from the coding library. Um, so we're going to open activity parse um, one.py. And we're going to try to get some information out of that. So we're going we're gonna to run it initially, and I'll show you what it gi gives you back. And then what we'll do is we'll Um, then, we'll, then we'll go back through the code, and we're going to make some changes in that code while we're doing that. So let's run it first. So here's the, so this is an, uh, we, didn't, we didn't put in the um, data in a way to parse it, like, or not parse it, I mean uh, indent it and order it like we did before with the other response. Because this is, this is what you would get back normally. Like that other response, if I took out, the indent, fun the, the indent um, uh, information, it would, this is, you would have gotten the same kind of thing back. You got a mash of data back. And that's not very, that part's not very human readable because it's a, it's a lot of data. Um, let's see. So here we're doing the same kind of thing before. We're defining our request, um, put in some headers here. We open the response. We decode it like we did before. We put it in the JSON load so we can get it into our dictionary format. And then we went ahead and printed it out. And we got, the we got a mash of data, which ended up not being very helpful. Um, but we can do some other things too. So one of the things you can use, uh, if you need to comment out parts of your code, you can use hashtag. And that's kind of what's going on here, or pound, the, the pound sign. Um, but we're going to. We're going to comment out some of this code here, just so we can see some of the responses we'll get back. And so Chelsea Dietrich is what we we're um, looking for. And so, um, so this is doing kind of the same thing before. So the JSON.dumps is going to print the indent of that function again. So we're going to print that out, but now we're going to print it out in a more human-readable form. But then we're also going to specify, specify some of the information we have saved in there. So we're going to take one of those JSON objects, and then we're just going to print out um, one of the, um, we're going to print out one of the items in that list that um, is initially in the response. And then we're going to um, so we're gonna sort that information, same way we did before up here. And then we're going to define specifics. So the name, like the Chelsea Dietrich you had up on the slide, she's in this object. And we'll, be, we'll see that on name. And then we'll see the printout of her address, her location. And we'll be able to find out where she is based on that from this particular API. So let's go ahead and run this. We'll just run it again. And so this right here, this is the first response that we got before when we had the mash of data. Now we sorted it again using JSON. And then now we're, now we're calling specific information. This is the mash, mash of data from that. So, what the, so we did, we printed out just like we did with the other responses. We printed out, um, and that's here. That's line 12. And that printed us out the mash of data. And then we got that data, and then we also made that nice and pretty too, using the same, object, uh, using the same functions we did before. And then we printed out um, just the single name of that person that was in that, uh, that particular object and list, which ended up being Chelsea Dietrich. And then we did the same thing with the other data. We kept giving it more values um, to be able to define the data, the exact data that we were looking for. And you can see that here. So we did the fourth object, or actually technically the fifth object, because um, it starts with 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, um, and then we said, hey, we wanted the name. Then we said, we wanted the address. And you keep part, uh, putting in the information you wanted to give to it. And it'll, um, and it'll hand that back to you. OK, so let's go through an, um, another example, but a little bit different. We're going to use activity parse 2. Um, and it's going to be um, more content. It's going to be complications. Um, we're also going to need to loop through the data, too. So we're going to show you how to do that. And so uh, one of the things about the particular API, so some information, like I said before, when you have to use an array, it's a little bit harder to get the information. And you have to have more code, and you have to use more of your computer to do it. So 
when you're iterating through an array, you don't always know where things are because it's not mapped over, whereas, because it's just an array, it's just a list. Whereas a dictionary is a map of where it is. So if I say name, I know where Chelsea Dietrich is. I know, I know what her name is because I can pull that up. I can pull up her address. Um, but if you're not really sure, you have to iterate through data to be able to find it. And so we'll, so we'll show that. So uh, we're getting a little bit low on time on doing this, so I'm going to do this a little bit quicker. But uh, and I'll walk through it here. OK, so the very first part of this, you have your same basic um, um, code that we've done before, and then you come down here. But what, what we're defining here is we're, we're only wanting to look at the campuses of the objects that we're getting back. So we, we're looking for specific data now. And so that being said is we're also looking for um, the buildings. We want to know what buildings are um, under all these campuses. So there's going to be different, like kind of like here, there's different. There's um, buildings 2-2, two, 3-2, two, 4-2, two, 1-2, two, two, that kind of thing. Um, so we'll, we'll be looking for that specific data. But since we don't know how much of that it, there is, we need to iterate through the response of campuses to see how many buildings are in there. Um, and so the way we do that is now that we have, um, it's gonna, what this is going to do, it's going to print out um, the campus data that we're going to get back. And then we're going to define that in the variable so that way we can iterate through that. And so what we do is we say, with the for loop, we say for campus and campuses. So basically what that says is basically saying, for each item in this list, keep iterating through. And so every single time it does that, it's going to print out. Um, it'll go through that. It'll get to that first object, and it'll say, hey, what is the name of this, cam uh, this campus? And it'll give you the name of that campus. And then after that, it's going to say, we're going to have to do another for loop. And this is what you would be a nested loop um, right here. And so what we, what we need to do with that is we, need, we say, OK, we know there's a building in that campus. And then we say, every building in campus, give me the building list. And then here, it'll, it's going to print that list out. So let's see if that'll do the, what we want here. Don't forget to save when we're running this. So there you go, just, uh, just like we expected here. Um, it, prints out, it prints out our first amount of data, which is the, which is the campus. And then and it gives us other, there's a lot of other information built into that, but we're not looking for the rest of that information. So it gives us the information we're looking at when we see all the campuses. So it says, hey, campuses. And it gives you all the information related to that. But we don't need all that information. We're just looking for building names. So then what it does is it says, OK, for every campus um, that is in there, that is in this list, Print me out every campus name. And then within the, each campus, print me out every building name. And so that's where you get Cisco Live Latin America. Oh, there's only one building in that, so just Moon Palace Expo. Um, this one was unassigned. Not sure why there was an unassigned building in there. But then you got DevNet Campus, and then it says, oh, there's, you got DevNet Campus, and then there's one building in there. So it's iterating through each object, through each campus, and telling you which building is there. Cisco Campus, building nine. So let's see here. Let's see. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm gonna skip to the next one just so we. I want to make sure we have time, so I have time for questions afterwards. Um, but let's. We're gonna go to activity parse four. So and we'll do it here, and this is where we're gonna actually. Um, we're gonna get data back, but then we are going to use that data to then do an action. So we're not just going to print data out. We're going to do that too, but we're also going to use it to get other data back as well. And that's what I'm going to show you here. So we're going to take the code that's, uh, that's been commented out here. We're going to uncomment that data. Um, also, another thing is just to make sure is you get your um, spacing right. And if, it, if you don't get it right initially, like right here, like this, is, this would be incorrect, this section right here. Um, a good thing I do is like when I've commented something out, if it doesn't come out just right, you just pull it back to the next line 
and then hit return and it, it'll pull it back. Most editors edit for, if, you, if they know you're using Python, they'll use that. So let's walk through this code real quick, and then we'll run that, and we'll get some time for questions. Um, so one of the things we're going to do here that's different than we did before is um, we're going to define the um, ability to call the API within a function. So that way, we can reuse that later. And so that makes it useful. So that way, you don't have to write this portion of the code over and over and over and over again. Because if you needed to do, let's just say you had to do multiple requests to an API, but you're, it's going to be a different API later, later but all you got to do is really re, um, replace the actual API call. Because maybe the headers are the same, because the, the APIs you're using are under the same. They're basically all the same. So you're, you're reusing a lot of data. So if you define it in a function, you can reuse that code later on. And that's what we're going to do here. Um, so in the same way, we're, you're, you're seeing this is the same code we've always seen, is we push the information in, we define headers, we put the URI in, which is up here. Um, but it's, the URI is passed in as a variable. So we, sit, we have to define that, and we push that through. And I'll show you that earlier. But you, um, you define the function. You say, I'm gonna, I also want a variable to pass in. If you did not want a variable to pass in when you did the function, you could just do that. Um, but we want to pass in a variable, so that's because we're going to use that in the function. So that being said, is um, so th this information is the same thing you did before, but we've um, defined that within this get content function right here. So when we come to JSON object and we load that here, we say get content. That's us calling our function, and then we use that UR URI we've defined up here, and then we pass that into get content. And what that does is that passes that information down here, and it runs through the process like we did before in your code. And so then we're going to define building names. This is an array we're going to use for later. And this is going to be important because we're going to, um, we're going to use a for loop to put information in there. We're going to put information in that list, and then we're going to iterate back through that list to get us some different values and to then use the get content function to then call a different API. We're basically going to define a new URI based on the information we get back and then use that to on the API itself. So we run through the code here. We have buildings, and then we have JSON object building list, and then we're iterating through um, buildings. So for every building in buildings um, that we got back from this um, API call, we're going to append the list, so we're going to add in um, the name of each building in there. And so then we'll, after, we, after we've made our list, we're going to print out building names. We're going to print out our list. And then we're going to print out the type um, of that variable, which is going to say print type building names, um, which is our list. And then we're going to loop back through that information. So now that we have our building name, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, we're going to say we're going to build a new URI for the buildings, and so we have building URI. So we take the original URI that we had before, and then we're going to append the string of the building name into um, into the URI URI request. We're going to add in the the forward um, the forward slash and then put in the building name. And then what this is going to do is this is going to it's going to print out that URI, and then it's going to make another get content request and give us that URI back. So let's go ahead and run that code. Make sure you save it. And there you go. So just like I was saying before, what, what it does is it comes in here and it says um, it parses the it it parses through that big response that we get back from the um, from the API, and then it said how many buildings do you have in there? It goes through the list. Well, there was only one building in this particular list. So then it puts that, um, that item into the list. It appends it in there, and which you see right here. And then it says, um, we said, then we printed out the type. We said, what, what, it, what is this object? So we define that variable with the list. So it said, what is it? And it says, well, the class is a list. Uh, we were just doing that as a, as a check for ourselves. Um, but then it goes through that list, and it iterates through. It only has it at one time because it's a short list. <laughs> But then it, um, it defines the next URI. So the URI is now building nine. Um, so we're going to use that to do the, H, the, the next API request. And so we then 
call that API based on the information we're um, using there. And so that's one of the things that makes it powerful is because then you can use Python to parse through data of an API. And you'll find this out when you're using any API, whether it's Cisco APIs or any other APIs, um, you typically need information from different API calls to then do other API requests. And so when you're doing that, you can, you can make that really easy, especially when we've already walked through the steps of finding out what we're looking for. We're like, oh, we need buildings. We've done this. We've used Postman. We've read the docs to see what kind of information we're going to get back. You can then use Python to parse through that data and get more valuable responses. Because now we're using it to, oh, now that we've got this information, now I can make this completely different request and then really get the information we're looking for. And so, um, and that makes it valuable in a lot of different ways, obviously, so. And so additional resources, um, here's some of the ones that I have listed here. So learning labs, we have a lot of coding um, labs over in the learning labs. You can go visit um, them over here um, in the DevNet zone. We also have, um, they're, they're available online as well. So if you, after the conference, 24 seven, you can go to the learning labs there. Um, I also recommend for documentation um, you can go to python.org or docs.python, but I also recommend, um, there's a book called Learning Python the Hard Way, and what that does is it forces you to go through, the, uh, um, through Python, and it makes you do everything, and the, the author does not let you take any shortcuts. And one of the things I found out is it's, it's, re it's a little bit repetitive, and that, that may seem a little boring, but if you use that tool and you keep going through that information, you'll, be, you'll have better tools to be able to use Python in the future. Um, and then also codeacademy.com, they have a good Python tutorial. Um, and then there's some uh, um, other JSON uh, um, resources you can use as well. Uh, so the other thing is please um, complete your evaluation so you can get your Cisco Live t-shirt. We also use that information so we can be better presenters. And if there's any suggestions you have, please, please give those back because that, that makes us better in the future. So when we're presenting content, to you later on, and you're like, oh, well, Jock could have done this better. Well, that, that, that's good, because I can use that later on to give you better content. Um, that being said, does anyone have any questions? All right, well, thank you for coming. <laughs>